guests today are Luen and Min Mong. Guys, how are you? Good. Good, David. Good. How's it going? Great. Are, are you guys related to each other? Because you kind of look alike. Yeah, that's no, we're just say. clones of you're each other. You're just clones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are brothers. I'm just joking. Yes. Uh, you're, um, and what do you guys do? I'm an independent develop, uh, software developer and a consultant, uh -huh. so I am all over the place. Yeah. I uh, write software on um, you know pretty much anything that I can write software on. <laughs> yeah. zeros. All right. All the way from Microsoft. That was Blend, by the way. Yeah. And then what do you do? <laughs> I'm a senior software engineer for a uh, consulting company called Skyline Technologies. Mm -hmm. um, I do everything from you know uh, web all the way to mobile, do databases. So. And you said you were doing some stuff with microcontrollers. You've yes. been doing that recently. Yes, we've been doing that for uh, probably about a good four or five years now. Is that for fun or is that for your day job? Uh, a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit, a bit of, of both. both. Oh, okay, well uh, tell me about it. What's, what's a microcontroller? What is a microcontroller, first of all? Well, a microcontroller is a small, uh, s well, typically the way I would put it is a single use, uh, single purpose uh, chip that is made for doing one specific task. Hmm. So, for example, right, computers have a bunch of different uh, contr uh, CPU, for, for example, mm -hmm. can do multiple different things. Microcontrollers are made with a single small set of CPU that usually is clocked somewhere between, you know, four to whatever megahertz, typically okay. in megahertz range, and a very small amount of RAM. But hmm. it can do very, very, you know, like good things, right? right? Yeah. We normally, the the processing power that we normally work with is between four megahertz and 100, 150 megahertz, mm -hmm. and we don't normally go above that. Okay, that's the speed of the, the speed of the, speed the, of the, 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 the clock yeah. speed of the processor. So... If we're looking at you know an i5, it's single core versus an i5, you know, with multiple cores and okay. multiple gigahertz. So, so it's not nearly as powerful as the as the uh, processor inside of this computer, or even in the one on my phone. Correct. Correct. No, it's it's, it's just a fraction of it. Okay. But but, uh, so but what's what's the what's the point of having such a slow uh, by by comparison, yeah. a less powerful computer? The, the greatest benefit is the boot up time is great. So okay. you don't have to wait for the whole operating system to boot up. Um, there is a little bit of a, a fraction of a second boot up time, mm -hmm. but uh, it's much better than like a whole OS booting up from right. you know, cold boot. Uh, and the, in terms of you know major benefits for a microcontroller would be the power consumption, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are actually using a lot less cores, a lot less brain power, etc. Okay. Uh, I can actually have a uh, Edmega, you know, uh, Arduino type, type of microcontroller okay. that I can plug in with a nine volt battery that will last for days and months, you know, if if needs be. Give me an example of some of the things that you're building with an Arduino, for example. Arduino. As a prototype, I built a uh, rope jumping system for a, for a client a while ago. A what system? Uh, so it's, it's a rope jumping. Rope right? jumping. Rope jumper. Okay. So it actually, every time you jump a rope, it actually syncs up with the Bluetooth via, via a device to the music that we're playing. So it was, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a gaming system. However, okay. right, uh, it's fun in a sense that, you know, that particular battery, you know, that, that you put into the... Uh, uh, the lithium battery that we put in, into that into the you know the, the handle the, of the, the handle of the rope uh, that lasts for you know weeks right oh okay uh, another time I actually uh, was consulting with a uh, medical company where we actually were uh, trying to use a blue BTLE system on a I'm sorry what a Bluetooth uh, uh, low, low energy, energy okay. uh, system that was tie tied to a tiny little microcontroller that is transmitting uh, data of patient information. Uh, you know that that lasts for like you know 15 days uh, 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 on a single single use type of scenarios. So mm -hmm. you can actually go a lot, a lot of you know uh, very low power but consistent data coming out of it. Interesting. And I've worked with projects such as um, uh, for one of the offices that I, uh, I'm actually at right now. Um, we have a big coffee cup bot like we have right outside today. Okay. Uh, it's a big tall f coffee flask, and we. Uh, and we have a bunch of little weight sensor, pressure sensors. To see how full it is? To see how full it is. Okay. And as it gets lower, you know, we can say, hey, it's, you know, we can sense. Time to make more just, coffee. It, it would send it to a, uh, a Slack bot, a, a Slack bot oh. and then it would just send it to the whole channel if needed and stuff like so that. So, like, people get a message saying, go make some coffee? Right. Oh. <laughs> or it's like, you know, you take the coffee pot away. It's something like a, a piece of software that serves humanity. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Perfect for us, right? Yeah. You take the coffee pot away, it will just say, after, let's just say, two minutes, it will say, somebody walk off with the coffee, <laughs> coffee pot, bring it back. Yeah. I like I mean, it. You can do some, some really, really cool, interesting stuff. I mean, for example, I mean, you know, Space Shuttle, right? It was yeah. running on a uh, 16 megahertz processor with, uh, I believe, uh, four, four megs of RAM for the longest time until mm. in the 1980s. It actually took congressional power to double the RAM to, I think, 8, eight megs of RAM. Wow. So you can do a lot of cool things with that, right? Right. And how much does a 
cheapest Arduino processing power and memory run right now. Arduino, I can actually get an Edmega chip on bulk because I actually design my own chips and whatnot as well. <laughs> so yep. uh, I can get it on bulk uh, for about 95 cents a piece. Wow. So you can do a lot of, a lot of good stuff with that. Um, tell me about the process of programming these things. Are you, um, uh, you there's obviously no, um, no room for a monitor on this. So you're going through a computer to program it, right? Yes. 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 So we are going through, um, pretty much we're reading through a serial com to debug anything. Okay. Uh, so it's writing serial code back, and then we're doing serial monitor monitorization on this. What's, what's the code written in? It's written in a well, derivative of C. Depends, it, right? It's called processing. We yeah. On Arduino, it's called processing, mm -hmm. and you write it in, uh, uh, it's a derivative of C, and it, it has its own compiler. Well, I mean, nowadays you can actually even write Arduino code on through Visual Studio too now, so hmm. that's good, right? right. It's all, it's okay. all, uh, it's all there. Uh, however, I mean, you know, uh, every single uh, prop microcontroller will have their own type of writing uh, code, but most of them are going to go by down to C or lower hmm. level. Uh, okay. Oh, some of them have proprietary languages yes, that you yes, they write to. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, as hard as C can be, at least for me, because I don't have experience in it, it'd be, I would think it'd be even harder to learn a, a separate language just to program this one device. It's, actually, it's not that hard. The harder no. thing is for you know regular developers like us, right, that, that actually write full-blown More high-level high level right. apps. Is that we have to abandon some of the ideas that we have, things, of, uh, things like, you know, um, uh, a web client, for example. Yeah. So oh, patterns and practices, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of those need to go out, uh, out of the window because you know, you, you know, like for example, when you're looking at an Arduino chip, I mean, because is, because those aren't efficient enough with the resources no. on the chip. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Exactly. Because you don't. You don't. So let's take a back in the days we use uh, .NET Micro frameworks, uh, Netwinos, and on those things um, they didn't have. Uh, if we put too much libraries that we're using, then our code that we can write is literally down to probably like a for loop. I see. So yeah. you really need to under kind of strip away and come bare down to, you know, bring it bring down your code to bare minimum and say, this is what I really want this thing to do. Hmm. Okay. Does it turn on the light switch or does it, you know, send a message out to the internet if needed? I mean, think about it this way, right? Microcontroller, uh, the cheap ones that, you know, everybody was going to play around with. Yeah would actually have something around the lines of 16 to 32 K of, K of memory. Mm. Out of that, maybe about a half a K to one K is only used by the bootloader if it is the, if it is there at all. Okay. So you're looking at, let's say 20, you know, on the low end, right? Let's say you're lo looking at about 15, 15 Ks okay. of so memory. So you're really, really efficient about what you're doing. Exactly. Yes. And, uh, so and no, no memory leaks, no excessive correct. Uh, correct. Uh, data and memory. Yeah, so right. you, you don't have time to actually go make a pretty looking, you know, uh, you know, classes and whatnot. Sure. Uh, most of these are going to be straight up. I have a, you know, uh, a, a place for holding a particular item, mm -hmm. uh, you know, memory location. Go fix it, or you know, release, drop whatever you got to do. Yep. What kind of tooling do you use when you're doing development? Are you just writing in a text editor, or are you using Visual Studio, or, or what? A bit of everything, right? Right, right. A bit of everything. Uh, back in the days, um, we did do um, uh, Notepad. Which is nicer because it uh, or Notepad plus plus, which gave us mm -hmm. a proper you know C syntax you know like the yeah, color a little bit the of color the, the color coding on there, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll co just copy the code over to processing uh, the uh, the compiler and compile it that way. Is that a command line compiler that you're using? No, no. Is it's it's actually a Java based. It's like a Notepad uh, type of thing, and you just compile it. So. So it's a Java-based compiler that compiles into a proprietary, you know, uh, byte-level code at that point, and then it actually get flushed to the uh, to the to the to the chip, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it runs in at the time. Uh, it depends on the on, on the microcontroller, so of course, you know, you got. I mean, looking at Arduino is one of them. You know, th there are other things out there. You know, like ESP8266, which is uh, another little you know item that we've been playing with lately, and yeah. uh, Nucleo. You know, uh, the, yeah, the, the, SD, uh, the SDI company is making something called Nucleo, and all you do is you write the code in, uh, you know, pretty much a text file, and you just—it's um, all done on the web. And when hmm. you're done, comp when you're done with the th with the writing your code, you just say compile, and it will just give you a, a bin file. You just drop drop it onto this, you know, you plug the microcontroller in, okay. and you just drop it onto it as if like it's a so SD it's card. A, basically, an X copy. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you deploy it. Yeah. Just That's copy how you the code. Right. Depend, it. Yeah. So it depends on the uh, on and the. And then chip how does itself. it run? Do you have to call it? Do you have to run that executable? Nope. It that just reboots after it's flashed, okay. and it's done. Okay, and then it is running. And it's yep. running in a loop, right? So typically you'll have a loop, an infinite loop yeah. that's yes. going on there, yeah. and that loop of some kind. Yeah. Yes. I see. 
right. so it's, it's, it's kind of fun. But how'd you guys learn this? Are you did you just trial and error, or are there some sites you can recommend people that are watching this that want to? Uh, there are a couple of different places. I mean, I, you know, typically for hobbyists, I would definitely go to my uh, Arduino because that's a, that's a good place to actually get a lot of these uh, uh, variants out there, and mm -hmm. it's a super cheap uh, uh, microcontroller to get started with. You and can get one for about five dollars. Nice. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other accessories like shields that you can put on top of it, which is really nice to do. Mm, what uh, is a shield? A shield is just an accessory, like you it's know, additional you, ports, additional component that you want to put onto it. So if you don't have GP, if you want to put G GPS capabilities, you okay. can just get a module and you just plug, you just push it in, and there's no soldering involved in it. Oh, I see. So a shield has some capability like GPS, or yeah, they like have GPS. detecting temperature, correct, correct. like detecting light, right? Uh, yeah, and then it's uh, it, but it's built into the hardware. And right, the hardware will physically attach to your microcontroller. Yeah, correct. Typically, okay. on a on, on a on a uh, board like you know uh, Arduino, Arduino, any any of the Arduinos, for example, right? I'm I'm sticking to that because it's a very easy thing for anybody right. to pick up and learn. Mm -hmm. um, those will actually have a pins uh, that are sticking out, and you can actually drop shields on top of it, and they're mm -hmm. usually stackable. Oh, so I see. you can actually say, hey, I have 16 pins of digital input and output. Out of that. If I'm using pin one on the shield number one, I can use pin three on a different shield, so you can actually have, have a stack of, of shields, you know, so you can actually mm. have radio on one of them, uh, GPS on another one, you know. Uh, Bluetooth on another one. Yeah, oh, and, and SD, SD, you know, SD card reader, you know, for storing data, that kind of stuff. Uh, the limitation, obviously, is that every every shield that you're putting on, you're putting additional code on there, okay. so you, you do have a, you know, figure out when you know when when, when my 30, 30, 32k is going to go run out, right? Uh, but that yeah. said, you can actually do a lot of things with it. Yeah. What's the coolest thing you guys have built? Microcontrollers. The coolest thing I've done on the Arduino stack is uh, putting web sockets on that thing yeah. and authenticating oh. against Azure. What? Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we were running a node server on Azure, and uh, we we had two demos before. The first one we actually did in uh, Arduino using what. Uh, web sockets as well and that worked great and then we're like we want to go even lighter than this so we we put on a uh, Arduino and we were able to manage to do that and that opened garage doors up and down and stuff like that very cool yeah. so yeah we actually had a, uh, a working uh, a prototype uh, at home that allows us to uh, monitor the garage door so if I'm leaving for example I can use my you know Windows phone Android phone, whatever it is the GPS on the phone will tell me whether I'm moving away from a particular location, so you're geo-bound. And once that, if you if we're moving away, obviously you can actually do a delta on your location, and then it will actually check on Azure to see whether if uh, instead of the door uh, of the of the garage door and using the node, uh, it actually has a constant pipe right that's coming back in there using mm -hmm. WebSocket. So I can tell you whether if the door is up or down or whatever the case oh, okay. is. Okay, so you could program your phone to talk to. Azure and have Azure. Yeah, and, and I can actually device. say, hey, so I'm leaving. If I forget to close the door, mm -hmm. it will close it. Nice. Or, yeah. you know, it can do other other things like in the middle of the day, right, uh, if somebody goes open open the garage door, right, and it will actually send me a, a text message. Oh, uh, yeah, hey, somebody's you know, breaking into your house. Correct, yeah, correct. <laughs> Bring it home. So you can do a lot of, I mean, like home automation, uh, you know, things with it uh, yeah. for cheap, and, 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 you know, you can do it fairly well quickly. That's very cool. Uh, anything else we should have talked about that we haven't? Uh, I mean, the latest thing that we are really working on right now um, is trying to um, get the ESP8266 chip, which is even smaller than a Arduino. Uh -huh. um, and that's, I mean, we're going to be talking about that at that conference as well, and we'll be having it on our blog sites as well. Okay. Um, the conference in Wisconsin, Dells, in August. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, so ESP8266, for those of us that don't know what it is, it's a SOC. It's a system on a on a, on a chip. Okay. You actually have Wi-Fi, GPIO, uh, you know, I2C communication. Oh, so you stuff. don't need the the shields for this? Yeah, no. So, um, so it's a tiny little chip about the size of my fingernail wow. that uh, runs for hours, running at 80, me uh, 80 megahertz. And it will go. It will connect to you know eight hundred two eleven BGN. Yeah. So it's fairly fast and mm. light. And uh, so. We'll try to control. We're trying to control different devices with it. Uh, to, and uh, if you go online and look for Azure IoT starter kits, uh, there's quite a few of them out there that actually use the same chipset mm. as well. So, so we're using the just the, the individual raw version of it with our existing microcontrollers to control different home automation stuff. Yeah, I mean, for example, right? If you're looking at things like I want to control the light. Individual, individual, you know, particular switch, for example, that's on the wall. Mm -hmm. You don't need to actually, you know, go get a, you know, uh, Raspberry Pi to do that, right? Because it's too much of a power. 
yeah. uh, load and it's just too big of a uh, you know process. Mm. So in, in, in this case, so you can so put it in strange to think that a Raspberry Pi is too much power. And, and <laughs> way too big, right? Okay, so right. 8266 is a tiny chip about the size of, like I said, my fingernail. Mm. Uh, with everything else built in, uh, with power converters, everything else, you can get it to about a you know, size of a stamp. Mm-hmm. At that point, plug it into the wall socket, and that thing will transmit to your network or any, anywhere else you want to an endpoint. Will, you know, and it will actually you know, tell you the status of lights and sounds or whatever you want to do fairly lightly. And you can transmit back, you know, the other way as well, right? So you can actually control, for example, uh, you know, lights, uh, dimming things, for example, right? Because it has PWM in there, so yeah. you can actually, you know, dim dim lights. You can actually, like, you know, change the audio, that kind of stuff. I mean, right now we're trying to mess with, you know, uh, the Cortana API as well on this, mm-hmm. and see how how we just want to see what the limitations are on this as well. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, we getting the socket communication working initially in the beginning, and after that. Um, we are going to try to control, um, we're going to try to bring our old um, project back up, which is a robotic lawnmower. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, that thing. Our, our infamous robotic lawnmower <laughs> where we actually can get to ride on it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what does it drive itself? <clears throat> yeah, it will, it will, yeah, it will, it will drive, drive itself. It has GPS uh, built in that we can actually need pretty much narrow down to about an inch uh, accuracy. Are you worried about the lawnmower becomes becoming self-aware? <laughs> well, it wants it, 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 we, we want we we lost it once though, right? Okay. Yeah, that that lawnmower actually does uh, can haul up a decent amount of payload. Okay. So it holds three hundred pounds of payload, mm-hmm. uh, and it goes it can haul up to th- uh, thirty miles an hour. So oh wow, there right. was a time <laughs> we actually had to, we the had lawnmower yeah. coming at me at thirty miles an hour sounds a little frightening. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it almost flew out of one of the you know Chicago buildings at one point because <laughs> we're like oh crap we can't control it anymore <laughs> run after it. Turn it off, turn it That's off. That's how the single is going to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other time was like we were, even before that, it was like in the earlier infancies of it, where we were just kind of testing around with the Wi-Fi and, and we just lost connection with the Bluetooth and it just, we had to run, from yeah, you know, running it onto those, the streets. It's one of those things that you got, you know, you, you, you got to, as a developer, right, these are the, these are the things that come to mind when you're writing code as a, uh, on, on microcontroller level. You got to know when to kill it. The kill switch is, is, is a giant <laughs> important part of it. You need a safe word right. for your yes. lawnmower. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and you got to say that here. I, I lost connection. You're working with IoT. It's you got to figure out. You know, it's com- it's almost like working with mobile. It's like what happens if there's no uh, internet connection or anything like that. Okay. How do you control this thing at, at that point? Considering that it's completely headless, right? Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and uh, did I ask you this? To where where should um, people go to get started? Uh, I believe you did, but uh, most of the so- resources, I would actually say go to ad- arduino.cc. This okay. is their main website, right. and there are a bunch of demos and uh, information on there, as well as Microsoft also have a bunch of information on their Azure you know, startup kits and whatnot From for Azure IoT. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, IoT uh, startup kits as well. It's mm-hmm. uh, a lot of information on there as well. So those are the two resources. We can actually say, give you a link and you can post yeah, it. Yeah, put it in the show notes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Men, thank you. Gwen, thank you yes, so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any one of you guys can reach out to either of us. Uh, we're pretty much on uh, Twitter, and um, you can find our information on our websites. Um, we welcome friends, and you know any form of technology that comes along with it, um, whether if it is you know on a small device or a big device, it doesn't matter. We right? love working with technology, anything that comes along. All right, and let's meet new friends. Yep. Thank you.